Well, hello there. Uh, this is Evan, and I'm going to play a game of Black Seas. Now, you've probably seen a previous video in which I play uh, my own little homebrew game. Uh, what was it called? Uh, Somebody Blundered against a computer, against ChatGPT. Man versus machine and all of that. Now, doing it with your own simple homebrew game is one thing. I thought I'd try it out with an actual uh, market, uh, you're spending a whole bunch of money on it game. So I thought I would try out Black Seas with it. It's a game by uh, Warlord Game, quite enjoy it. It's one of the first ones I've gotten into. And I thought though, we would try and have a game of Black Seas against, of course, another AI. Now, of course, it's just ChatGPT, the one that's readily available. I don't think this is uh, 4.0. It's probably an earlier one. Um, it's the one I used before. And basically, I'm going to try and have my little chat AI friend here play as a band of rogue pirates, a bunch of brigs on the high sea. And my uh, Royal Navy are going to come in and try and clear out this scum and villainy. So let's see how this goes. I'll show you the ships, I'll show you the terrain, and I'll also show you what I've typed into chat in order to make this work. So as I said, uh, chat will be using three brigs, three very basic ships. So they're not intended to be complicated. Uh, it'll have three of them that will have to sort of negotiate around. Uh, but again, I've chosen deliberately three brigs to keep it nice and simple. We have um, my sort of really, uh, not very historically knocked up uh, cow and sloth. Um, but of course, we've also got this uh, French flagship, which is I think modeled on actually a British ship the Charlotte, I think it was the Charlotte was that one, uh, with the first fleet. So we'll have these three brigs, it'll just have its medium uh, long cannons, just as long cannons to use, nice and simple for the computer to handle. And against that will be two British ships. It will be a frigate and a bomb catch. Now these guys points wise come out at about 230, as opposed to the brigs which are 240 I believe. Uh, obviously the, the frigate is just firepower, certainly compared to the brigs. Uh, whereas the catch, it's a little bit more complicated. It's got the mortar on it, which is a little hit and miss, let's be honest. Um, so that's where things can get a little bit hairy, but we'll see how we go. The battle today is going to take place on a fairly blank bit of terrain. Only that one little island will be there. But to be honest, I'm thinking of even just having that island uh, not actually be terrain. Basically, ships can kind of pass through it. Um, I'm mainly using it as a bit of a reference point as I'm filming this, so that way we kind of know where we are on the battlefield at any given time. Uh, the wind's going to be coming from the north as to where my pocket watch is. And yeah, it's a nice little tight arena. Again, I'm kind of hoping that this battle will be uh, fast and fierce, uh, just to make it a little bit more exciting. So just a nice little board. And the scenario is just simply destroy the other fleet. That's all that's going on. We're keeping it nice and simple for the AI. Speaking of the AI, let's have a look at what I put into it. So here we are, chat GPT. So at that top box, as you can see, that is the information that I'll be putting into chat in order for it to make its decisions. I'll put this little blurb down in the comments as well. So you can have a look at that uh, if, in case you want to give this a try as well. Uh, as you can see, I've, tr I've done some little test runs and I'm pretty happy with the results I'm getting. Uh, we'll see how we go as the game enters in. It will basically know uh, how, how far away the enemy ships are, if the wind, where the wind is at any given time. And I'm just, with that data, it's going to be asked, uh, what does it want to do? Does it want to increase sales? Does it want to go star uh, starboard or port, hard or gentle? It will also identify a primary target. Now, I'm basically going to give chat the benefit of the doubt where basically as it goes along its little arc of a journey um and we're going to play by the simple rules again we're keeping it simple for the robot but as it goes along the arc of its journey uh it will fire at anything that it can however its primary target will basically hold any fire until it can get the one that it wants to try and get and of course because they're pirates it'll give us a nice little uh catchphrase for the pirates to shout as they attack so that's what we'll put in and that's what we'll see how, how well that works. Uh, we'll press refresh on this when we get the battle going. So that's the experiment for this evening. Let's see how well this runs. Uh, I'll just do it as a battle report. So keep it nice and snappy. And I hope you enjoy. Well, I hope I enjoy it to be perfectly honest. Let's see how this goes.
So the wind's coming in from the north. I've got my ships, and we just rolled randomly what uh, side they'd be on. My ships are over in the east while the pirates are over in, the chat pirates are over in the west. Um, I also forgot to mention, we'll just be using our guns in this battle. We won't be using any boarding parties just to keep things simple. Again, um, we might try and make it more complicated as we move forward. And we shall get underway. So with the game set up and the weather stable, it was the chat robot who attacked first, issuing forth its horrendous and horrifying piratical war cry. Poise the jolly Roger and let's send those scurvy dogs to the depths below. Both sides slowly felt their way towards each other. It was the HMS Sirius who led the charge for the human fleet. Meanwhile, the Endeavour slowed its sails down to light. The goal, at least I thought at first, was to get somewhere downwind and hopefully lob shots at the enemy as they drew closer. The catch is awfully inefficient and hopefully would be good for that. So at the end of the first round, not much action, both sides slowly crept towards their inevitable destruction. These AI brigands would slowly jockey their way towards us, and it would be the green cow that would unleash its first attack on its human being opponents. A vast UE landlubbers, Prepare to feel the wrath of the black flag. Now is the human fleet turn, and the Sirius would turn and return fire on the cow. However, its fire would not be successful, missing both of its long-ranged cannon shots. The Endeavour would then try and lend its weight and fire. However, true to its mortar nature, it would also miss firing, even with my accidental second dice on its shot at the cow. The start of the third round, uh, the weather was rolled as a four, and on my amended chart, this would see a change in the weather. And fortunately for the humans, this meant that it would have the advantage at the beginning of the next round. The Endeavour would fire, but once again, fail to make its shot, while the Sirius would move into a better position and attempt to completely obliterate the cow, if it could. But in spite of bringing its medium cannons into range, the Sirius would still not be able to inflict a critical level of damage to the cow, not before it would be able to turn and flee itself. And now it was the Sloth's turn to take the lead for the AI piratical forces. Poised the Jolly Roger, we'll send them to Davy Jones' locker. Sloth's successful hit ensured that there would be some rudder damage to the Sirius, and so now it would careen in the next turn completely out of control to port. But the Sirius's pain did not end there, with the Charlotte now moving in to offer its own pain to the crew of the British ship. A vast UE Scalibags, prepare to meet your watery grave.
round three saw the cow seen off. However, the remaining pirate fleet was just absolutely pounding the Sirius and the Endeavour seemed to be able to do little. And once again, the winds of fate changed, seeing that the battle would continue to rage around the Sirius. The Sirius once again took a severe blow from the Charlotte. However, I decided that in this game that the criticals would not stack, although the pain would still be felt. Now at the start of this round, the Sirius would still be suffering from rudder damage. However, this was in its favor as it turned to port and on its that journey, it was able to fire back at the Charlotte. The Endeavour's defensive strategy was proving lackluster, so it would need to get in closer in order to be more effective against the enemy pirate ships. However, if this was the case, the fruits of this uh, change of strategy would not be felt until possibly a later round. Meanwhile, while the Charlotte had thrown itself into the thick of battle, the remaining ships, the Sloth and the Cow, seemed to be floundering a little bit, kind of lost near the lighthouse island. The remainder of the pirate fleet seemed to flounder and watch on. The Charlotte would take a further beating from the Sirius, this time receiving not only a critical hit, but a devastating barrage from all uh, types of cannon fire. Finally, the Sloth turned into the fray and offered some fire onto the Endeavour. It would indeed inflict a small amount of damage on the little ship, but it would be too late. The Charlotte, with a morale of only four, failed its saving throw, which meant that it was now surrendered to the British fleet. And at the end of round five, the pirate fleet was down by a third. However, the British fleet was not all that better off. Round six saw that the winds would be in the pirates' favor. They would jockey into position and it would be the sloth who would fire, but not at the endeavor, but it would actually take a risk and fire at the Sirius. These shots would deal more terrible damage and even reduce the Sirius down to being critically close to surrendering. With both the enemy and the winds at the Endeavour's back, it just had to move and shoot, hoping that its luck would hold and get a hit on the enemy. And as chance would have it, it would indeed score a solid hit on the enemy. And it was now the Sirius's turn to try to defend itself. And if you could get a good hit off in range with all of its cannons onto the sloth, it may have a chance of completely reducing it to kindling. But unfortunately, only one of its long cannons was able to land its shot. In round seven, the cow would finally move back into combat and it would take a long shot at the endeavor, which it would make. Meanwhile, the sloth being damaged would move behind the cow and be unable to offer any support in this round, giving the Sirius just one more chance to wreak revenge upon the pirate fleet. With the Sirius seriously underperforming, the Endeavour would have to swing around and try and take a pot shot. But once again, its luck would indeed hold and land another shot upon the pirate fleet, reducing the ships to increasingly close to their striking point. In 
In round eight, the winds would change and the Pirates being on the rope, the Sirius would finally get one last chance to try and prove its worth as a frigate. It would fire all but one of its cannons and finally inflict critical damage upon the cow. But the cow would not go down without a fight. It would fire back at the Endeavour, trying to swing wildly to inflict just some damage back against its opponents. But as for the robots on the sloth, well, it was just all too much and it was all too late. And so with that and blood in the water, the British sharks were now circling the cow to bring these AI pirates to justice. And although he underperformed at the start of the match, the Endeavour would receive the final blow against the cow, reducing the cow beneath its strike rate. And with that, I decided to call it. With the AI defeated by the humans and humanity, I guess, living to fight another day, on the tabletop. So there you go. The computer pirates have indeed been defeated. Uh, the, the chat seemed to slowly break down as the game went on. At first it was giving very clear and direct orders, but as things went, uh, yeah, it just, it just seemed to, I don't know, like, like have all its ships sort of like come to a grinding halt or, or just not know how, to, like they just wouldn't want to change sail, that kind of thing. So I don't think the chat GPT quite held up for this game, at least with the, the input that I was giving it. So I guess I, I think that maybe just because I was putting in a similar input over and over again, it thought that maybe it had to do something completely different eventually. But yeah, I, I don't think quite held up in this game. It gave me a nice comfortable win, but obviously that's not quite what you want. You want it to sort of you know, work out nicely for you. Having said that, um, just being one person using chat, it made that whole process take just that much longer, having to measure out how far the enemy ships are away and that kind of thing. It did take just that little extra time. Um, this sort of layout should take only, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour to play against another human being. However, that just took me in real time, like, I don't know, two hours, three hours, something like that. Uh, two and a half hours, probably something like that. So yes, I definitely wouldn't say that chat held up this time. Um, we've got a few more years until the robot apocalypse uh, tries to take over the world using small sailboats. So I guess that's reassuring in some ways. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And hopefully you'll see me again in the future soon. Goodbye. My heart will always belong to the sea and I'll meet her embrace once more soon enough. But mark my words, ye land lovers, my crew and I shall live on in tales of love, courage, and daring forevermore. And if you ever find yourself in need of a true adventure, follow the stars and listen to the whispers of the waves, for they will lead you to the treasures we've hidden and the secrets we've kept. Farewell, my friends, and may the winds be ever at your back.